We welcome you to the Georgia Dome in Atlanta and this final regional final. The seven-seeded Xavier Musketeers against the top-seeded Blue Devils of Duke. We began with 65 teams in this mosaic we called the NCAA Tournament 12 days ago. Now we place the final piece of glass into the final four. Duke or Xavier will advance to take on UConn, Georgia Tech, and Oklahoma State are already there. Let's check the starting lineups brought to you by Pontiac. On the left for Xavier, Miles, Dolman, Cage. The two seniors in the backcourt, Chalmers and Sato. On the right for Duke, Deng, Williams, Chris Duhon, bruised back and all. J.J. Redick and Daniel Ewing. Mike Krzyzewski in his 24th season as the head coach at Duke University. He is 9-1 and one in regional finals. And Thad Mata, 36 years of age, has the Musketeers into a regional final for the first time in the history of the program. The officiating crew, Mike Kitts, Orlando's Poole, Patrick Driscoll. With Bill Raftery, I'm Fern Lundquist. We welcome you to Georgia. And Xavier has it. And Vern Lundquist, two goes. Minute, minute. Into the hands of Lionel Chalmers, who lit up the first two teams in the NCAA tournament, there's Romain Sato, first shot. Chris Duhon, who had 10 rebounds the other night, a career high, gets the first. Anything to win, and Duhon was on Sato. Interesting matchup. See if he's offensive-minded. He's been passing and rebounding. Lou all Deng in the low post. That one misfires. Deng tries to chase it down on the floor. And here's Dolman, the freshman. 6'9", freshman from Union, Kentucky. Short. Rebound, J.J. Reddick for Duke. How about that confidence with the left hand? By the rookie. Now Duhon, who injured his ribs in the lower back on his right side in the ACC championship game against Duke. A courageous performance the other night, 37 minutes. A nice shot breaking down by Sato. They're going to have to double, or Williams is going to have a big day. And they can't afford Miles to have foul problems. If you're going to rake, stay there. Anthony Miles, one of the three seniors in the starting lineup for Xavier, commits the first foul, the 6'9 from 245 pounder from Chicago. Very important for Xavier to be sound on the offensive end. I think they're going to have to use the dribble drive. Lionel Chalmers is very good getting into the thick of things and kicking and finding people. Sheldon Williams, the sophomore from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Over the course of the year, a 69% free throw shooter has one more. Straight up full court pressure. They're going to really take the game to them. Duke with a zone trap. Here's Dolman, one of two freshmen in the starting lineup. Here's the other, Justin Cage. And back to the senior, Romain Sato. And I like their idea that they were going to attack if it was there. Instead, settled. Chalmers tries to split the two defenders. And Deng, I believe, is going to get a call for the foul. Well, Duke has advanced by defeating Alabama State, Seton Hall, and then the other night, they extended their lead in the second half and won going away by 10 over the fifth seed, Illinois, 72-62. Now, they're going to run that high pick and roll, so uh, with the first early foul for Ding, that could become a problem. They like to double the dribbler. Daniel Ewing has been assigned the defensive responsibilities for Chalmers. Little quick dribble, jump stop, back outside, Dolman. He puts it on the floor, takes the jumper, no. And a rebound, Sheldon Williams for Duke. Nice shot by Deng defensively. Duhon, who only scored from the free throw line the other night. J.J. Reddick, the pump fake, misses his first. Well, you got to close out under control. Don't give him those open looks. Nice. Chalmers taken away, it's on the floor. Timeout call, Duke. 18.07 to go, first half. One zip. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Singular Wireless, Audi, and by Bud Light.
One nothing Duke has an early lead with the free throw by Williams. They are concerned as I think all Duke fans are with the well-being of Chris Duhon. Bill. Well when you're a player and a leader you have to play in pain. Occasionally we play in pain. But this is a young guy that does anything to help his team. I think he's put the wrap a little bit lower. It was more visible the other night. I think that's enabled him to shoot the basketball. He's done everything else but look on the offensive end. He is the only senior in the starting five for Duke. And here's Ewing. How about that? Off the glass. They still haven't hit. Now Romain Sato, the senior from the Central African Republic. And Justin Cage. They've got Dolman inside. Now he pops out. Uh, moving Deng in and out. I think Miles deserves a touch for this team. they got to punish Williams. They'll make him guard. Get any sense of nerves by either team in the first two and a half minutes? I think they're playing hard, but this is the end that does show. Maybe you just pull the string a little bit. Not as confident with the stroke. Still haven't had a field goal, and we played two and a half minutes. Now Chris Duhon, he's guarded by Chalmers. at senior on senior. Back it comes to Ewing. And they're trying to jam down when Williams is in the box area, and that's how Deng got the open look. Deng, who can hit that long-range basket, misses that one. Here's Dolman at the other end. Miles measures it, decides to pass, gets inside where the trees are. That's off the glass. No, still no field goal. Nice hustle by Reddick to run it down. A little bit of a forced shot that time by Xavier. Reddick's got to start moving to use those post screens. 0 for 9 from the field by both teams so far. Here's Dang. Off the glass. Rebound Anthony Miles. And solid balance by Duke. Chalmers, little runner, still not there. Tipped, Sheldon Williams. And really not good judgment by Chalmers. You see the dribble all the way out. Too many big guys looming. Now a sense of urgency now from the Duke partisans who stand. We are awash in a sea of blue today. As opposed to the orange that filled half of the Georgia Dome here on Friday night. Back to Duhon. No field goals and we played almost four minutes. Duhon up and under. There's the first pass. Different guy right now. Nice hesitation with the dribble in the blow by right to the rim. Throws the defense with the bounce. He tried one field goal Friday night, and that was a desperation three as the shot clock wound down. And uh, we're convinced that uh, in part the lack of offensive effort there or the short point uh, production is because of the injury. Here's Miles for two. Drifting for distance. Well, he didn't get the touches on the box of Williams. Might as well load up deep. Duhon, there's the switch. Chalmers gets back. Bang in the corner. Ewing got it. That's excellent around the horn basketball. They made him pay for the rotation. Doubling the ball. And they covered nicely in the paint area, but not on the perimeter. Daniel Ewing, season of 41% from long range. And he puts Duke up 6-2. Now Chalmers, that's for three. A little nylon, but a little guy. Well, that's his game. Now we can use the bounce to unload on the defense. And here's a distinct difference for Chalmers. He missed his first five shots against the Longhorns. He's been torrid in the tournament against Louisville and Mississippi State. Loose ball. Hell ball, possession arrow, Duke. Third meeting ever between these two. Duke leads by one. Back in Atlanta, let's join Solomon Wilcots. Well, guys, according to Chris Duhon, those tender ribs of his kept him from getting a good night's sleep last night. He said when he woke up this morning, though, that the pain level had decreased to a four on a scale of one to ten. Now, that's an improvement from yesterday where the pain level was very high. It was about at an eight. Now, he said that the pain really doesn't affect his shooting or his dribbling. It mostly affects his sudden movement, really affects his agility and quickness more than anything, Vern. All right, Solomon, thank you. John Dockery has uh, come on the floor now, along with Shavlik Randolph during the timeout. So Randolph, number 42, and Dockery, who has the ball in his hands right now. And Vern, is a little 2-3 combination, and watch out for Redick. There's Duhon launching one. That is where I think it hurts the most. Yeah, you can't check the guy. You just check an area, and they get a giveaway underneath the basket. Chambers does a wonderful job for his size to rebound. Over three a game, but a factor. Solid performance the other night, getting seven rebounds. 
First foul of the game on Shablik Randolph, the 6'10 sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina. Now, everybody said, how do you beat Duke? I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to have to feel them out, but I think you've got to use the dribble. They take away your entry pass. I think you've got to lift your people. And this is not going to help you here. Don't turn it over. You can't get your D set properly. Look at how deep that is. My goodness. Long rebound and uh, over the back on Luol Deng as Cage uh, was there to go for the rebound. And that's two fouls on the freshman from Sudan. Make sure you vote for your starting guards in the Pontiac All-Time Tournament team. You can cast your ballot now at NCAAsports.com slash Pontiac. And Reddick got that great look. Uh, Mike not happy with that foul call on Deng. Uh, but you give him an opportunity, Reddick. He will make you pay. He'll burn you. And so if you're in the zone, you better tag him deep. Now Reddick picks up Diedrich Finn, who is off the bench, the sixth man. He can electrify things. He, uh, he was a starter for 49 consecutive games. And one of the turning points in the season was uh, a decision to put him in as the sixth man after 19 starts this year. And put the freshman Justin Cage on the floor. They've won 16 of 17 since they did that. And this is a good job going stronger, though, has to be the case. That is, a, uh, unfortunately, you got to make this call. Force the turnover. I'm going the other way. I believe it was Sato right down in there. It is Sato, his first. But for getting back to Duke, I think you've got to lift your inside people because they deny so well. So you can get some back cuts. And I think you have to dribble entry on a wing. It's very difficult to make that initial pass. Sean Dockery, he's guarded by Finn. Ooh, I think this might be Williams in the box area. He was trying to hold off. That's one of their pet plays. Reddick runs the baseline, use the post bumps, and he gets rid of his guy beautifully. Unfortunately, Williams tag. Take a look at it, Bill. Well, the you, reason he is so good is he is, I mean, he reminds me a little of Bill, Bill Bradley. Uh, his ability to get free. John Havlicek comes to mind as well. Playing without the basketball, and unfortunately, the pick inside. There's the screen from Miles, Justin Cage. Little weave gives it to Diedrich Finn. Dockery goes for the steal. Finn, jump stop, runner, got it. He is tough. Both of them can get in the lane and make the runners. They also have distance, and they can bounce. And the first lead for Xavier. They are up 7-6. Playing in their first Elite Eight ever. 1990, they got to the regional semifinals. They lost to Texas in Dallas. And hoping, obviously, for their first spot ever in the Final Four. Uh, the sixth man of defense is Stad Mata, by the way, over there. <laughs> he is moving arms and legs, reminiscent of Luke Conner, second St. John's, energized. Shavlik Randolph behind the back dribble. Whoa! Show me some stuff at 6-10. The follow, no. Chase down, out of bounds. Great attack of the rim by Randolph. Xavier lost three in a row to go two and five in Atlantic 10. Since that point, the key win, they say, all of them, was a two-point victory over Cincinnati. They've gone 16 and one. The one loss was to Duquesne. The most significant win until they got into this tournament was their 20-point victory over then undefeated St. Joseph's in the Atlantic 10. Good help by Randolph from recovery, and I think this guy being vocal helped him too. Chambers got the team together. Cage in the lane, blocked by Williams, picked up by Chalmers off the glass. Beautiful touch by Lionel Chalmers. He is a gamer, and that sets up their D and their crowd. A 7-0 run. On the baseline, taken away, Diedrich Finn. Duhon is back. And Finn's going to go to the half court. No, he's not. He's going to give a runner. And there's Chalmers again. Great patience, Fern, by Finn. And Mike Krzyzewski cajoling his team to get back and identify. Nice little blow by and great patience on the offensive end. Lionel Chalmers, when he gets in the streak, is torrid. Had 11 of 13 against Mississippi State. Here's the baseline drive, Dockery. Xavier Ball. Bad Mott is 36. He'll be 72 when this is over. 
Avar Lundqvist, good judgment has to prevail no matter what profession you're in. The ability to recognize no bigs at the rim. Finn stops, gives it to his partner, Chalmers. The two bounce, pull up, Jay. A little nylon, but a little guy. That is solid judgment and understanding of numbers. Dietrich Finn started for the first 19 games this year. Sophomore from Indiana, Newburgh. And he puts it in the hands of Lionel Chalmers, a senior out of Albany, New York. Chalmers, oh, beautiful pass. Great. And how about the landlord? Unbelievable. <laughs> He's collecting a little rent that trip. Sheldon Williams before the first of the year that time. Oh, and the bounce goes for Ewing. Fortuitous, but he is a good open shooter. That's what makes Duke very tough. The bigs run to the rim, and the wing people can knock down deep threes. That ends a 9-0 run by Xavier. Williams goes for the steal. There's Brandon Cole, who's in during the timeout. That one saved on the sideline. Nope, nope. On the line. Uh, the ability to get into the lane so important. A great look, as you said. But look, off the ball by Williams. Outstanding recovery, preventing the easy one. And the ability to knock down deep ones really stretches your defense. And Duke does that to people. Now here's Chalmers. Quick foul called on Ewing. Number five, his first. Near the midway point. Xavier, no number seven seed has ever advanced to the final. I beg your pardon, Virginia. I was trying to say mm -hmm. only one seven seed has done that. And that was Virginia in 1984, and they advanced out of Atlanta. Inbound pass, a little sloppy. Duhon kicks it over on the right side. That's for three, and it's not good. But the tip is. And that's a great example of hustle. You big guys get down that floor. And the ability to shoot it soft enough to be rebounded. That's the key, Vern. Those threes, if you don't have a good touch, start fast breaks the other way. Duke has tied it up nearing the midway point of the first half. Chalmers. And uh, off of Dolman's foot. Now, Dolman has not been a factor. They, I think they've got to get him to screen with Randolph and pop. He's very good at that. Chalmers, there's the double team. Get it in the hands of Romain Sato. Jumper, no. And Reddick has it for Duke. A chance to reclaim the lead. I would look for something deep now with Williams. Their screen down series and the lock. Reddick pops out over Sato short. J.J. Reddick misses again. Tonight on 60 Minutes, he's the smallest guy on the soccer field. But he's the one with the biggest paycheck. And he's only 14 years old. Meet him on 60 Minutes tonight. And Vern, that's that play where Reddick really didn't get square, which he does beautifully. If he doesn't have the jumper, he had Williams locked in on the block. Reddick is 0 for 3, so also is Romain Sato. There's Dolman, and there comes Randolph to help. Nice. Job. Wow, he oh. got the wingspan, and the tip goes Romain Sato. Not a good play. Throwing it under your basket. Everything was excellent defensively. Great hustle. A lot of people attacking the ball. My Miles got to be careful, Vern. Excuse me. Baseline, Williams, Ravlick, offensive board, and a foul is called. I think they're going to get Chalmers. Uh, Randolph really being more athletic. How about this play by Randolph? The other end, and this is just a mistake on his part, throwing it right under the rim. Gives an easy deuce. Those are assists you don't like to gather during the course of your career. Chavlik Randolph, as a junior in high school, he began to notice a problem with his foot. Ultimately, it took two years. They figured out it was a problem with his hip. And he had surgery on that hip last May, 10 weeks on crutches this summer. Mike Krzyzewski says in the last two and a half weeks, he has blossomed. And Chris, Mike can relate with his hip surgery. Just takes a while to get coordinated. They look for a great offseason by him and a sensational year next year. That one touched last by Sato, knocked out of bounds, 15 on the shot clock. Luol Deng is going to come back in now, and he will replace Shavlik Randolph. Now, this is a case of trusting the player, and also, you are the coach, Mike Krzyzewski. You're going to let the referees know. It, it better be a good foul. Deng back on the floor, playing with two fouls. Nice hustle. Oh, my goodness. Finn all over. Nice anticipation. Rotating down, trying to help his partner out. Diedrich Finn, out of bounds. It'll be Duke to throw it in. 
most dangerous guy is the guy that inbounded. Here comes Reddick. There's Duhon up and under. Not there. Rebound, Miles. Xavier will run. No, they won't. Now Chalmers, pull up jumper, 17, in and out. What a screen by Miles. Got him right to the open look. Dang with a re rebound for Duke. 8.15 to go. And a foul. I think it might be Sato. Let's take a look here as they bang one another. You've got to be prepared for anything. You said there was no fast break, and you're right, but they, you can make it because your trail guy, instead of just taking up space, sets up a great screen, Miles, and he is a couple of quarters to get around. Now, Thad Mott is going to go to his bench. Justin Cage, a freshman, replaces Dolman. The freshman. Ball tipped. Battle for it. Romain Sato has it. Now they need Sato to get on track on the offensive end. At 27 the other night in the win over Texas. Uh, it's Duhon, though. We we're talking about offering it up and yep. being the team leader. Chris Duhon will play any size out there. Now Justin Cage, number three. Finn, here's Lionel Chalmers. Duhon switches on him. Whoa, way outside. I don't think they needed that. You had Deng on Miles. Why not use him? He's got the two. He'll back off a little bit. And it remains 13-11. 7.30 to go. First half of play. Entry pass. Williams. Great help, but a little bit late from the top, I believe, by Cage. And that's what they need. Powered into Williams. I don't think, unless they double, they can contain him. Williams has five. And we're tied at 13. Old crossover from Chalmers. Fifth year senior. If he got paid by the bounce, he'd be very wealthy. <laughs> My goodness, he loves to dribble it. Well, you think sometimes he dribbles it too much. Well, we had him over 21 in the Louisville game. That's enough. You get a violation, but they were playing solid, getting the rim, finding people, doing a solid job against them. Under seven minutes remaining, neither team hitting uh, the ball well. One of four from three-point range for Xavier, two of nine for Duke. Well, this funny, guy's funny-looking hat. <laughs> He's having a devil of a time. <laughs> well, the, the guy that's having a devil of a time is William Sheldon Williams has been terrific. 5.7 rebounds and blocking shots. He'll with Randolph are very tough to get layups on. They're going to have to create passing lanes, the little guys in particular, as they get to the rim. Chalmers, three of seven, and there's four of eight. And they're, they're not sure if it's two or three. They're going to look at the monitor. And Mike Kitts wants to see if it's two or three, so they're going to hustle over to the official's table and take a look. Boy, that's a tough act when you got Chalmers turning the corner on you and then able to knock down deep shots, and I'd, say, I'd guess no from there. And that they probably will opt for a better angle like this one. Yeah, I think both of them are on there. Yep. The puppies toe in the line. Well, that was quick and easy. Mike Kitt says it's two instead of three, and Thad Mata says, are ah, you sure about that? It's good to see Mike Kitts to get one right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to hear about I'm that. Sorry to all the kids. Oh, all you are kidding. going to hear about that. <laughs> Xavier by two. They've never been this deep in the tournament. Here's Luol Deng. And he's fouled, is going to go to the free throw line. Well, we mentioned that only one seven seed has ever gotten to the Final Four. Take you back to 1984 here in Atlanta. Closing minutes. Virginia's captain, Kent Nedlin, steals the ball and scores. That gave Virginia the lead. The last chance for the Hoosiers. Stu Robinson's shot doesn't go. Virginia wins it 50-48. to 48. The only seven seed to ever advance to the Final Four. And that, as Dang hits the free throw, was right after Virginia, or rather Indiana, had knocked off. North Carolina, the number one seed. And Terry Holland in that video, too. His great career as the coach there in Virginia. And obviously, since in that regional final in 1984, Virginia defeated Indiana, who had knocked off a number one seed. If Xavier does this today and wins this game, they will become the first team to ever defeat a one, two, and three seed to get to the final four. You're a confident team and a hot team right now. In the corner. Rebound, J.J. Reddick. 
Romain Sato continues a little cold. And Rennick puts the pressure with the run. Sato on him has done a nice job early here. Chalmers out on Duhon. Luol Deng muscled up by Cage. That's pretty tough. That is pretty good. In traffic, taking hits, protecting the apple, and then the runner. I think he learned that in England? <laughs> or I Egypt. think he did. Well, he spent, born in the Sudan, Luol Deng, and the family moved to Alexandria, Egypt, when he was four. There's a spin move, and miles for two for Xavier. Luol Deng's father, Aldo, was a minister of transportation in that troubled country, Sudan, and they ultimately moved the family to London. Then when he was 14, Luol and his sister, Eric, came to the Blair Academy in New Jersey, where he spent four years and was recruited heavily by Mike Krzyzewski. And, you know, he, he's only seen his sister, Vern, who I believe is up at Delaware. Delaware she started right. at Maryland. And uh, how tough it is for any kid. You go, you get homesick away at college. He's only seen, he hasn't seen his parents or his siblings other than Eric. And his mother and dad have never seen him play basketball. Well, they will get a kick out of it as we do. Tonight on CBS, a woman who thought she committed murder may be innocent after all. Don't miss a new episode of TV's number one new drama, Cold Case, tonight at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Ball on the floor after the miss, Chris Duhon. Chris Duhon's cousin is Jarrett Jack. He had a pretty good day today. I'll say. 27 points as Jarrett Jack led Georgia Tech into the Final Four, defeating Kansas in overtime earlier on CBS. And Deng's got to be careful. He backing in on Cage. Rebound story, Duke, 18 to 13. That's uh, Sheldon Williams. And there's Dang missing from long range. Well, he's been more offensive-minded since he's come back in. Now, Diedrich Finn, number 12. There's Dang pulled up. Unexpectedly, Miles gets it. Up and under. Nice play. Well, he uses that body beautifully. Wards off, a little hesitation, the pump, and then the finish. Anthony Miles, one of three starting seniors for Xavier. In his second year, he spent some time at only college, O-L-N-E-Y, in Illinois. There's a jumper air ball. Romain Sato, here comes Xavier. They're up by one. And they've been doing it with the dribble and then finding. Chalmers. Well, Miles wants it brought around to him. Little guys never listen. Well, over on the uh, Xavier bench, they hold up the play they want, and they signal it in with cards. So this is the stacks curl post, by the way. Okay. I knew that. A nice kick. In the corner, Finn, no. Randolph, that's touched last by Shavlik Randolph. It will be Xavier Ball. But Miles got away with a little Tavern League push, but right here, the belly rub, the bump, the ability to finish strong. Krzyzewski coaching in a regional final for the 11th time, 9-1. and one. The only loss by two points in 1998 to an Indiana team, a Kentucky team under Tubby Smith that won on to win the NCAA. The genius of one guy, Tom Butters. Yeah. Uh, unknown up at Army other than the local area there. Uh, I fortunately, uh, unfortunately had to coach against him, but Tom Butters hired him, stuck with him, and the rest has just been absolutely incredible on and off. Uh, the basketball floor. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski graduated from West Point, was a captain in the Army, and then got the job there and was at West Point for five years. And there's a foul called, I believe, on Nick Horvath, the senior who is on the floor. Interesting young man. He's a, got a double major, does Nick Horvath, in physics and English. And he's a short story writer. Fascinating fella. Nice feature on the road to the Final Four yesterday by the guys back in New York on Nick Horvath role player as most of these guys are and fearless going against the physics major was Finn I mean I'm afraid well, they call him that fearless Finn or they will from now on there's little guys able to finish around the rim or draw fouls it's an incredible weapon for your offense and that's what makes Xavier so tough to defend against and we talked about that uh, three game losing streak in late January by this Xavier team they lost to George Washington they lost first to St. Joseph's, then they lost to George Washington, then they lost to Andorona Dayton, but since that time, they've won 16 of 17. 
including, I might add, four of four in the Atlantic 10 Turf Tournament, four games in four days to win that championship. Coming together, though, Vern, we mentioned Chambers, and then that one evening at 3 in the morning, they returned from a trip, and uh, Thad Mata got after them himself. Yeah, Chalmers, uh, as Duke goes to the line, and Williams shoots one and one. Lionel Chalmers, after the loss at George Washington, called his team out. And then Thad Mata informed us that when the team got back to Cincinnati, he called a team meeting at 3 in the morning and told them how he feel, felt about things. Now, we would have been there on time. Gave a little blow for Miles, uh, which I think is smart. Give him a rest. He has played terrific. Really been a factor on both ends of the floor. Six points, three rebounds. 21-20. Yep, there's the IZ pop. <laughs> I would have like thought that was a hip-hop band. It's like something we ordered last night. Or from Texas, you know, it's ZZ Top. A couple of guys with beards. Yeah. We, no, I went, I left early. And this ability to screen out here. This is where Dolman, I think, is a factor. Because if you double, he can make the shot. A little push from the rear there, unfortunately. A tag by Daniel Ewing. Second foul on Horvath. Duke substitution, number 15, Sean Daniel Dockery. Ewing is out. Sean Dockery is in. It's on Daniel Ewing. Sean, not Horvath. Ewing picks up his second. And Lionel Chalmers at the line. Thursday on a new Survivor, the All-Stars think it's time for a merge. But what they get is a bizarre twist that will shake up the game. Thursday at 8, 7 Central on CBS, America's most watched network. Xavier's got good control of the game in the sense they can run their offense. And basically it's been the ability to dribble and get some heads turned. Here's the end now. I, I think this is where they can be exploited, particularly inside. Dockery, Harris by Diedrich Finn. When Williams really loading up and they're not finding it. Here's yeah. a little flex screen they run, a curl or a fade. Reddick, Sato was late getting there. J.J. Reddick with a mid-air adjustment. It goes up and off the glass with the left hand. And that was it all set up by his fade. He lost his defender. Then you got to close out and the ability to put it on the deck. Well, when you think of J.J. Redick as a pure shooter, we think of him with the pull-up jumper. But how about that adjustment? Well, he's pretty athletic. To look at him drifting out about half court, and you got to hug him, which opens up entry lanes. Look where Sato has to play him. Now it's in the hands of Sean Dockery. Not that much of an offensive threat. Here's Horvath. Same play on this side. Now the load up. Say goodnight. Williams. Say goodnight. Just a great play, and they run it in a gorgeous fashion. It's just a simple play. You run your guy, the corner in Reddick, off, and then the duck in after it. I mean, that's just a terrific play. Reddick in the far corner had come across the lane. You've got to recognize him. The center opens to help up, and down. The lock, the shape up by Williams. That's a pretty nifty shot. Uh, great release, but I just love the setup. Second foul on Cole, and Sheldon Williams makes it a three-point play. Duke regains the lead with two to go in the first half. I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Krzyzewski rode that play frequently. I'm looking over at the bench, and Steve Wojciechowski is in the face of Shablik Randolph. I mean, he was emotional. Well, you know, he's the guy, believe it or not, at his size, he's in charge of the big men. Right. He went to Pete Newell's camp. Jay Billis and others, Mark Gallery, have talked to him about post position. And his, his statement was, you're supposed to know everything as a coach, but he was fiery as a player, he's fiery as a coach. And the other day, we witnessed practice. Mike said, it's great to have these young guys out there. It's tough for me to get the deny stance all the time anymore. Well, a former National Defensive Player of the Year, Steve Wojciechowski, and he's joined over there by Chris Collins and, of course, Johnny Dawkins, who's been a longtime aide and the star of the 1986 team that went to the Final Four. There's Johnny to Mike Krzyzewski's left. Well, at least there's two guys who'd give the ball up. I know Collins wouldn't. <laughs> well, that's an inherited trait. That's right. Like that. Like Doug, so. yes. And here goes that 2-3 matchup. This is where you got to really worry about Redick. 
And there'll be a lot of pointing. Here he is in the overload side. Dolman hurries over. To stay in the zone. Left side, turnover. That's uh, five. A little ex inexperienced at the top. Horvath maybe not as comfortable for Mike, but they're buying time, rest, and making sure no more fouls. Now here's Xavier. In their win over Texas the other night, and it was a very hardly fought ball game. The Xavier team only turned it over seven times. And here in the first half, only three so far. And look at Duhan defending shot. A nice fake by Miles. And one. The little kiss by the big fella. He is alone and taking advantage. He did that beautifully. He just prepares when he perky jerky with the release fern, which makes him so tough. As he gets in here now, he'll just hesitate as he goes up. There he gets the, now he knows he owns the guy and just put it up there with a chance for three. Anthony Miles, 6'9", senior, Chicago. Over the course of the season, this has not been his strong point. He's a 51% free throw shooter. Twenty-seven, twenty-five, one ten to go. First half. Dolman runs Reddick now. Across the baseline. Look how far out he is. And he'll drag one defender. Chalmers got both hands on the ball. There's Reddick. Great look. I mean, you just can't stay honest with him when you're in the zone. You figure nobody's going to shoot it out there by the GT, the Georgia Tech line. Oh, is that incredible? In rhythm. One of the best shooters in college ball. Absolutely. What he does for others. Nice pressure defense causes the timeout here. That's Duke defense at its best, Fern. Time is called with 39 seconds to go, and Duke leading by one. Coming up on Singular at the Half, we'll hear from Final Four bound Georgia Tech, then Greg, Mark, and Seth start to preview the Final Four field, plus Singular one-on-one -on -one with Billy Packer Trivia Challenge. And Vern, right here, you can just see the defense. They figured nobody's going to shoot out there. And out here, we mentioned the Georgia Tech line just in the screen in this area. But look how far you have to go. A little nylon by one of the purest of all with the stroke. J.J. Reddick. Ball in the hands now, Diedrich Finn. 16 on the shot clock. We've got 30 to play in the half. Well, they've got to go inside, I think. Well, Dolman forces the issue here, but they had Miles with Horvath. They didn't take advantage. Chance for one now for Duke. Shavlik Randolph gets the board. And they go straight up man, Xavier. Not going to leave Reddick alone. Romain Sato out on Reddick. Sato with those 27 points against Texas the other night has been held in check offensively. And here's Reddick with a little runner. And a little soon, too. They got a chance here. A good one. They got Dolman if they want. Ben, pull up over Duhon. And it is good! He had a 45-footer at the half against Mississippi State to give Xavier the lead. That was in the second-round game. They're going to check the clock on this for him, but that's out of his hand. You can see Dolman was at the rim. A heady move, the confidence level. Oh. Diedrich Finn for three at the break. Well, does that give you some juice going in at halftime? A little rub of the head. Rub a dub dub. Let's go to Sullivan Wilcox. That motto, both teams struggled to score the ball early on. Was it a case of good defense or just nervous energy? No, I, I think it was good defense, I, I hope, because, uh, you know, to hold them to 28 points is, is what we have to do. Uh, we've done a good job taking care of the ball, and, and that's one of our emphasis, because you can't give them anything easy. And, uh, you know, we're fouling the shooters too much. We've got to stop doing that. Oh, good shot by Finn to go in at the half. Thank you, well, Coach. Thanks, Back to you, Vern. All right, Sully, 30-28, Xavier, our exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. We'll continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Wachovia Securities, Planters Nuts, Sprite, and by Pontiac. Singular at the half. Sponsored by Singular Wireless, the wireless company that fits you best.
And welcome back to our New York studios in Singular at the Half. I'm Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. And welcome to the Diedrich Finn Highlight Show. <laughs> if you're just joining us, you just missed the first half. Winding down, Diedrich Finn. Xavier down one, three-pointer, no problem. At the buzzer, Xavier goes in with a two-point lead. He just did this in a second-round game against Mississippi State. Time running down, Finn from beyond the half-court line. And it's kind of habitual for this young man. It certainly has been. In that Mississippi State game, they would never trail again after he knocked down that three-pointer. They've done everything they've needed to do so far. Both teams playing good defense and Xavier controlling the pace of the game to this point. Well, I mean, the good news for Xavier is that they're winning, but with Duke going three for 11 from the three-point line, you've got to figure they'd like to be up maybe by nine or ten points. I'm not sure how long that stat is going to be uh, consistent, but this is why Duke can, can deal with a bad shooting night. Sheldon Williams gives them a presence inside. You see the miss from Ewing for three, but Williams is there for the offensive tip, and this is what Kansas was not able to do with Wayne Simeon. Get the big guy the ball inside. Not only can he score, but he can go to the foul line, and more importantly, Clark, he can get Xavier's big men into foul trouble and that would be to their advantage. It certainly would be but Anthony Miles doing a nice job for Xavier. He's really played well during this stretch of winning games for Xavier and here he is in the low post in the first half. Penetration by Finn. Look at him take his time survey the situation then go to work. That's what he needs to do. He doesn't need to put up big numbers but he's got to be a presence in there not only scoring the ball but also on the glass. Watching singular at the half. Vernon Raft have the second half of Xavier and Duke in just a moment. The winner gets the last spot in the final Four. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular Wireless, the wireless company that fits you best. Great effort. Here comes Xavier. Pretty long. Here's Duhon. This for three. Sato. Put it down and get to the 10. Chalmers. All the way. At the other end, here's Reddick. Judges. We'll return to Atlanta after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's basketball championship is sponsored by McDonald's. Putnam Investments. Miller. And by the new Chevrolets. Xavier leads by two as we get set for the start of the second half. A berth in the final four at stake. We check in with Solomon Wilcox. Duke assistant coach Chris Collins, what is it about what Xavier's doing that's causing you guys the most problems? Well, they played hard, and we haven't shown very much poise on offense. I think we're doing a pretty good job defensively. We have to use our poise, get good shots, and hopefully come out at the start of the second half. All right, Chris, thanks for stopping by. Back to you, Vern. Well, take a look at Duke's stats for the season on the left side. 80 points per game. They've been held at 28 percent, 28 points today. 33 percent field goal shooting in the first half. And three of 11 from the three, Bill Raftery. And the big thing is valuing the ball. Xavier only turns it over three times. Duke 17 plus a game that they turn it over. And you can see the difficulty ringing the bell. I think we'll see a different Chris Duhon now. He knows he has to emerge on the offensive end for this team. Reddick has it. Here's Duhon. And it's taken off the glass by Romain Sato. Those two have presented an intriguing match in the first half. Now Duhon is on Chalmers. Here's Chalmers, leading scorer for the Xavier Musketeers in the first half of play. And Sato with only two points and Duhon with only two points. To kick out the Dolman, you got to stay at home on him. Dolman misfires off the left side of the basket. Here's Chris Duhon and J.J. Reddick. Oh, look at this foul, a tug of war. And watch yourself there. Miles a little upset at one of the premier officials, Mike Kitts. Had a wrestling match underneath. Anthony Miles has called for the foul as he got uh, bottled up with Sheldon Williams. They'd be a heck of a tag team, wouldn't they? Whoa. Those two? Boy. Big wide bodies. Reddick, jumper in the lane. No. Good rebound. Williams offensive board. That's out of bounds. Touch last by Sheldon Williams. Well, if you're a Duke fan right now, there's a little more energy in their play. I think they missed the layup, maybe a little overzealous at the start. So Xavier has to do a nice job. They've been penetrating off the high inside. That time they go outside. Dietrich Finn up short. Miles put back. Got it. 
Well, the dribble is decimating Duke. All the attention. The heads are turned. Looking at the dribble and nobody shilling with the blockout. Diedrich Finn got the start at the second half, replacing Justin Cage. Here's a foul called on Finn. Let's go back and take a look at that dribble penetration by Finn. A nice job with that high screen to find it. You just see the inability to get on the inside because everybody's in, eyes are attached to the, the bounce. And I think that's really been a major dilemma containing the dribbler. Daniel Ewing goes to the line. You see the line on Anthony Miles. A four-point lead for Xavier. Follow the game on CBS Sports Line's Game Center and get more than just live scores. Get play-by-play -play coverage as it happens without having to refresh the page. Check it out at CBSSportsLine.com. Duke's Ewing a successful trip and Duke stepping up the defense on the made free throw they're trying to energize themselves normally they feed off the defense some turnovers some easy goals uh, Xavier has had them at odds because of this ability right here Cat quick Lionel Chalmers he's so close to the grill it's tough nice double and reaction by Dang no good there's Miles with the put back again the tip got it the second time the big guy he doesn't elevate big but he carves such an area out spreads and move some people. One of three seniors for this Xavier team. I'm resisting all inclinations to refer to the three Musketeers. Successfully I, to that point. I, I'm glad you are. And right here you can see just the big shoulders. So impressive as they don't get a body and dig on him. And he is playing terrific basketball on both ends of the floor. There's the oh. entry pass. Finn with the steal. Here's Finn. He's Number quick as well. And there is Williams rejected. That's his fourth block in this ball game. He had eight in one game earlier this year. And he uh, demolished a season record of blocks formerly held by our colleague Mike Jaminski. How about that? Michael, huh? I didn't know Mike could elevate like that. I think Finn got in too deep. He should have taken advantage and kicked it off. 109 blocks now for the season for Williams. And there's a foul going to be called on Luol Deng. Number three. I believe That's his third. That changes the way they play. Coaches looking at one another. And right now, they're going to let him go. He played with two in the first half successfully. Mike Krzyzewski placid at this point. Bowman inbounds. On the line, it will be Xavier's ball. Romain Sato, 27 points against Texas on Friday night. Two points in this ball game. And then Chris Duhans attached to him. That's the difficulty. He's not getting clean looks, really not moving without the ball, and they haven't needed it because of the ability of the guards. And they've got Redick on him now. Yeah. They had Duhan on him in the first half. Now Chambers had hurt them, so I think Mike's going Duhan on Chambers. Right. Here's Sato with Redick guarding him. Spin move. Foul called. It might be Williams in the front. Let's see what the signal. now. It's Williams. No. Nope. Yes. Sheldon Williams. That's third on him. Well, that changes things totally. But now if he's in, you got to use him. I think that's the big thing. That little flex screen that they've been running, they've got to go to and ride it to the bank. Uh, Romain Sato, one of the marvelous stories in college basketball. January 19th of 1999. Misses the first. He came from the Central African Republic, the capital of Bangui, as an exchange student from a group called Friends of Africa, taken in by Tom and Tiffany Thompson. They are now his legal guardians. He will graduate. There's his legal guardian mom. That's Tiffany. They have two children of their own. And Romain Sato has not seen his folks in five years back in Bangui. And here's a foul on Williams. And just to complete the story on Sato, he's got a brother, Honore, who is uh, on the computer as we speak with his mom, Josephine Yakia. They don't understand basketball, the parents, Augustine and Josephine, but the brother does. And as this game is being played, he's on the computer in Bangui in the Central African Republic telling Romain Sato's mom and dad, what's going on? A nice little cut by Dang. That is a wonderful story. The academic ability of Xavier and Duke, a credit to these two terrific institutions, making sure these guys get a degree when they finish. 
Miles picked up his third. Pretty delivery again. Got a goal. There's Ding. Here comes Duhon and Duke trailing by three. They're three and three this season when they trail at the half. They were down to Xavier by two. Ding for three. How about that, huh? They have the load up by Williams after the high screen. He goes to the lane. And then the drift by Dang. They yo-yo the two big guys. Dang has nine points. Well, Finn's been able to go anywhere he wants with the dribble. That's a major issue. Dolman for three. Oh, wow. A rattler. He can stroke it. And he also knows how to put it on the deck. 6'9", freshman from Ryle High School in Union, Kentucky. Here's Duhon at the other end. Up and under, he's got two. That's the aggressive nature he's got to exhibit, I think. And now they try and rag the length of the floor. Diedrich Finn, guarded by Daniel Ewing. Ooh. It was a little nickel diver. And my kids uh, just looked it off. A little woofing going on there. That's three on Ewing. So a trio of players for Duke with three fouls. Dang and Williams and Ewing. And Sheldon Williams will get a rest. Sean Dockery is coming on as well. And he'll replace Daniel Ewing. Now you see the problems right there. You'll see a lot of different individuals. The one thing with Dockery comes in, he steps up the defense. He really can get after a guy. Luol Dang guards the inbound pass. Here's Chalmers. Dockery reminds you a little bit of Barley from St. Joe's. Look at this help. Oh, Randolph is there with a block. Here's Duhon for Duke. He's got Dockery left side. He'll Pretty. leave it for Dang instead. Ding, ding. My bell, you'll ring. Oh, my goodness. Duhon, a different personality, huh? Driving the D and then setting up the big fella. Here's Chalmers at the other end for Xavier. Duke reclaims the lead by one. Luol Deng, seven points in the last two minutes. Crossover in the lane. Dockery with a foul. Well, almost a give up there. He had been blown by and hit the containment necessary. Here's Deng. Time has been called. 15.41 to play. Georgia Tech, Oklahoma State, and UConn have earned their way into the Final Four. Bill talked about the graduation rates of both Duke and Xavier among their athletes. Well, one of these teams will get a graduation certificate and advance to San Antonio next week. They will take on UConn. Luol Deng. We mentioned Romain Sato and his personal journey to this spot. Luol Deng, born in Sudan. His family, the kids, learned basketball from the new bowl. There's the pump fake and Dolman nice entry pass up and a foul is going to be called it was uh, if it's on Randolph it's unfair what a great job he got it clean that was one of those anticipated fouls oh my goodness from the rear he gets all ball here Verno look at this this is just a clean play come on save it put it in your hip pocket that's just great that's anticipating the foul let it happen Miles at the line. One more. Thursday on a new Without a Trace, CY TV Guide calls this week's episode a thriller filled with twists. Don't miss the surprise ending Thursday, 10, 9 Central on CBS, America's most watched network. Two at the line, successful for Williams. Nine lead changes, seven ties. Largest lead by either team. Xavier by five. This is where I think Duhon is tough playing off the ball. Got three on top. Yep. And they've got Dang outside. That's uh, he learned those techniques from a guy named Grant Hill. Reddick goes for the steal. Here's Romain Sato. Dolman. And back into the hands of Chalmers. Now Duhon shadows Sato again. And now he switches back. He's on Dolman. Baseline. Oh, the third. That is tough. 
Pretty good footwork by Randolph. I think he may have been moving, though. Don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, just a, a great anticipation. You can be moving, but you've got to get there and establish. That's still that. It hadn't been planted, and that's number three, I believe. And he becomes the fourth Duke player with three fouls. Shavlik Randolph, for the moment, stays on the floor. And that one was kicked. So we'll uh, attempt it again. Well, that's the big concern now as you come down to crunch time. Make sure you rotate people a little bit. That's what Mike's been doing. Williams out right now resting. Chalmers having trouble to find the inbound player. Got it off the glass. And unfortunately, they let the basketball come in under the basket. And Riddick in a very vulnerable position. You can see the strength around the rim. Now that's the freshman Justin Cage who has started the last 17 games his first basket and a Duke turnover as Reddick put it a little high for the 6'10 Shavlik Randall. Mike wants timeout. They are not the personality you are accustomed to seeing with Duke. Xavier the seventh seed. They've never been this deep in the tournament. They lead Duke by three. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's basketball championship is sponsored by Microsoft. Hellboy. Tostitos. And by the Principal Financial Group. Fourteen thirty remaining in regulation. Duke hitting 38%. Xavier 35. Duke seven turnovers. Only four for Xavier so far. And the Blue Devils have blocked six. Well, only three players have ever had their jerseys retired at Xavier. Here's one of the men, Tyrone Hill. He spoke to the team. He was part of the last squad that got into the Sweet 16, a team that lost to Texas in 1990 in Dallas. Kick it in the corner. David West, who was a star on this team a year ago, now in the NBA, is also here. And Barry Larkin, Byron Larkin, I'm thinking Barry and baseball, is part of the radio crew here. So that was off the glass and chased down by Lou Aldang. Nice play. He looked off the defender, Dolman, and those big, wide strides. Took it to the tip. One-point game, 13-49 to go. Rosado got a great look, didn't he? Look at Duke in the second half. They hit 61% of their win over Illinois on Friday night. Rosado trying to get on track. Nice call by Thad Mott. He got him on the box, couldn't come up with anything. There's a Reddick, stays with Chalmers. Tough. Takes the jumper off the iron. And a foul is called as Miles comes down with the rebound. It's going to be Shavlik Randolph, and that's Ooh. going to be four. Got to come up with it. Here's a little, a little look off here. Just Dolman anticipates that that is just a heady play. A rookie to boot. A little head and ball fake and then ticket to the tip. Randolph sits with four. That is the seventh team foul. Anthony Miles, Miles will shoot two. Line. He's two of three at the line so far. One and one, beg your pardon. Not two. Now you mentioned his poor free throw shooting all year, but what a tiger on the glass he has been, Bern. You've got to get ready, and Duke was when he's shooting, and they know the numbers, too. Yep. Took the shooter. Who else? Duke. Saw so Daniel Ewing flash in the lane, got the rebound. Here is Duke with a chance to reclaim the lead. Daniel Ewing has the ball. Sheldon Williams wants it. Got the carry, got the luggage. Ah, yeah. You don't see it called that often, but you know, it's interesting. I think Mike asked for it earlier. It's interesting. That's what drives Coach. And I watch him just linger between floors there. Give him a couple of bucks for the luggage. Toting the Toomey. <laughs> you got to roll it. Here's Finn. Justin Cage, Romain Sato. Oh my gosh. Oh, it was tipped in by Williams. Yeah, they'll give it to Miles because he was the first yes. player, but you're right. Sato getting clean looks now, just fighting himself a little bit. You got to fight through it. 
Some nights, do you think it's just your night? Divine intervention. And look at the load up in the lane. They, and Deng's have become a very good post passer. And they finally get Miles. That's their pet play. That and the flex. But as you noted, Vern, uh, the piece by the white shirt. And he's just trying, really tipping it to himself, I think. Trying to tip it off the glass. Unfortunately, he gathered the rim. Well, Anthony Miles picks up his fourth foul. He'll stay on. Duhon. As Chalmers got out, Reddick with the spot up. Can't get it. And the push by Miles. On Miles. And that's number five. Wow. Does that change the whole game? He had gotten away with one earlier, Vern, that drew the ire of Mike Krzyzewski. And as a player, you think you can continue. It's a discard. You put your hands down in the crowd, and he's got to be careful. You don't want to any extra harm done. Well, I'm a lip reader. You see the hands, though, yeah. as he went up? I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. But that is the normal tendency when your bad bot is about to get teed up. He's got to be really careful. Yes. He's saying he got the wrong number. I think I'm just reading into it. Uh, but there's no question it was Miles. That's one of those uh, you will question yourself whether you should have had him out. Mike gets. I should say he got 30. And they are almost ready to play other than Mike and Thad. Game's going on, guys. Now here's Once the again, push off again. See the hands on, and the shoulder, and then you bring them up nice and clean. You think you got away with it? Frustrating, but the right call. So the Musketeers lose Miles with 12 minutes and 24 seconds remaining. And here's the zone. They got to really watch the deep shooting. And you've got to acknowledge these guys are all worried about the inside people. Williams loading up, Deng as well. Daniel Ewing, the only starter on this two team who was not acknowledged as an all-ACC team member. He finished 17th in the voting, the top 15 earned status. Every other starter on the Duke squad was recognized in some form or another. And he is making them pay for it a little bit. Chalmers. Tied at 44. And they're going the other way here. The load up in the lane. I mentioned Sato a little bit frustrated, not getting his way and venting it. The emotions got to be controlled against Duke. I've earned luck with J.J. Redick right over here. you got to put a body on a guy as he dives to the rim or in a checkout situation. You can see right here maybe a little bit of a pratfall. Redick got a hand on him, and then the push, and then the frustration. Miles out. Sato with two. Finn and Cole as well. But on the other side, Mike's going to have to re rotate people consistently as they come down the stretch. Let's check the five on the floor now with 11.42 to go. Chris Duhon with those bad... Ribs on the lower part of his right back, joined by Daniel Ewing, J.J. Redick, Luol Deng, and Sheldon Williams. The starting five on the floor. Oh, Duhon's got bad ribs and a big heart. Oh, he's my goodness. Ticker. And the job he's done on Romain Sato today is just amazing. And or Chambers. Yes. yes. Nice dribble hand look. Gives you a nice look, and it's tippable. Chase down by Redick. Here's Duhon on this side. He's picked up by Romain Sato, number 10. Tie game, 44-44. They run the baseline, and if there's any help, they lock low. Redick, there it is. He's been toying with getting free. He punishes you. He's so consistent in his sprint and running around the picks. Curls beautifully and gets himself set. Up and under, stolen. Another turnover. Here comes the break. They leave it for Redick. No! Well, that would have been so oh, dagger, oh. and Duhan knew it. Sato fade away, not there tonight. Rebound, Justin Cage, not there for him either. And what a nice job by Cole to keep it alive for Cage. You get just a feeling of a sense of desperation yeah. from Xavier right now. And, and, and Sato is one of those guys, if he could just back it off a little, he could help this team. He's so talented. Ewing. With his own putback, doesn't get the roll. Romain Sato, one of nine from the field. Lionel Chalmers 
Now he's picked up by Duhon, and Verne, they've done a much better job, Duke, of containing this particular play, circling or assisting or showing, and occasionally switching as they did now. Deng is out on Chalmers. Chalmers scoreless in this half. They're going to switch it back. Takes him off the dribble, little runner in the lane, got it. And you know, that was actually Duhon. He was trying to get Deng to switch, and Deng was on the wrong side. They couldn't exchange. Now they're chatting in the backcourt for that reason. Got a glance at the very emotional senior Anthony Miles as we came back down the court. He fouled out with 12, 27 to go. Had great difficulty in holding back the tears after he fouled out. And this one's going to be called on no. Lionel, uh, Lionel Chalmers. There's Miles. And Dolman, the freshman, back on now, replacing Justin Cage. Now, wow. Cole and Cage are going to have to play very well. Same situation for Thad Mata. Giving guys extra minutes. And here's Deng at the line. Chris Collins and Mike Krzyzewski both recruited Blue All Deng. And foul underneath on Brandon Cole. Well, they really have their problem. He only gets 10 minutes a game. I don't know why the conversation with the two officials. So Landis Poole, one of the three, and that is Cole's third foul. Uh, Williams at 69%. Silent when your big guys can nail these. Sheldon Williams shooting one and one. Mentioned his nickname, the landlord. He got that in the ninth grade back in Midwest City, Oklahoma, because he dominated the space in the paint <laughs> well the tournament summary we started with 65 teams 12 days ago UConn in the final for the first time since 99 Oklahoma State first time since 95 Georgia Tech first time since 90 and the last team will earn that right in the next nine minutes and 13 seconds this is on JJ Reddick Goes that game last night, one of the great ones, I thought. St. Joe's, Phil Martelli and his guys, sensational. Eddie Sutton, one of the true gentlemen, dedicated guys in this profession. It's going to be a great week next week. Just one more piece. Mike Krzyzewski hoping that his team gets back there, and he has a chance at his fourth NCAA championship. Romain Sato hoping to lead Xavier in for the first time ever. Thad Mata. Grew up on the border between Indiana and Illinois in a town called Hoopston. And give me the nickname of the high school team. He, he called me back yesterday to Thad Mott. He says, you want to know what our team nickname was? I said, yeah. He said, we were the Hoopston Corn Jerkers. I hope they won a lot. Nice alley-oop to Ewing. How about that play? Duhon with the rub by Dang. My, oh, my. Nine to go and a three-point Duke lead. Now that's where they set you up consistently, lifted that weak side. Nobody there to help. Great deployment. Here's Chalmers. Chris Duhon, senior and senior. What a battle. Dolman, the freshman, tries to find help. And Duhon is all over Chalmers. That's been the difference in this half from Duke's end. Only once do they have a mishap. Two max and out, five on the shot clock. Now Deng's on him. Over Deng. Nice Off three. the rim, there's Sato. And one. That's where he can do his damage. One of the better rebounders from the guard spot. I don't know if they give this to Williams. It is. Ooh. Everybody. Over 6'5. He's got some numbers in the foul category. Right here, too much dribbling, a tough jack. And this is frustrating for defense. You do a great job all the way through the shot clock. And one of the premier rebounders elevates, able to get a three point possibility. Sheldon Williams heads to the bench with his fourth. Shavlik Randolph back on the floor, plays with his fourth. Now Brandon Cole will go out, Justin Cage on. All ready for Xavier, if you missed it. Anthony Miles, the 6'9 senior, fouled out about four minutes ago. Sato, who hit 14 of 17 from the line on Friday night, misfires with a chance to tie it up. We near the eight-minute mark. Duhon, prowling the perimeter, taken away, 
This is Diedrich Finn. There's Dang, so he comes back outside. Chalmers goes by Duhon, kicks it out. Finn for three. No. Oh, is that big? Great opportunity. Randolph might have just fouled out. Yeah, Cage was the guy fouled, no. I believe. It's Reddick. Yeah, J.J. Reddick, it was four and not four two. How good was that play? I mean, just solid. Nice counter. And if you think back when this is all over, how big was that play? Mm. Absolutely. Emotionally as well. Tenth team foul, so Xavier in the bonus. Double bonus now for the last 7.45. And Justin Cage, undefeated at Pikes High School in Indianapolis last year. They won the state championship. He was Mr. Basketball in Indiana. And he misses with a chance to give Xavier the lead. Reddick grabs the ball, calls timeout. And we've got 7.43 remaining. Tie game. Network. 7.43 to go, 51 all, Xavier. First time ever in the Elite Eight in the history of the program. Duke, three national champions under Mike Krzyzewski. They've only lost once in a regional final. That was in 1998 to Kentucky. It was, by the way, 12 years ago today in Philadelphia that Duke defeated Kentucky 104-103. Some guy named Christian Leitner hit a shot, I remember. And you were there, and Grand Hill inbounded. And Reddick gets to the rim, but comes up empty. He didn't have legs. Here's Xavier. Chalmers, spin move. Oh, what a spin Start. move. Off Start. the glass offense. Good call. Good call. And wipe it out as well. Great footwork. Occasionally, your dribbling gets you into trouble. Little spin. You think you're away, and the feet are set. Great call, and an easy one. Duke has been here before, 1990, March 24th, East Regional Final against UConn, Christian Leitner. That sent the game into overtime and Duke to the Final Four. On March 28th, 92, we all remember this one, Leitner, he was perfect that night, 10 of 10 from the field, 10 of 10 from the line. And Mike Krzyzewski's team went on to win the national championship. I also realized... Uh, hearing it earlier that that was Lenny Elmore's birthday that day oh my and God. again today and he must have been 25 then <laughs> I sure looks like they sounded great didn't they he yep. and Gus here's Shavik Randolph 51 all under seven to go little, he's got a nice little hook here there you go little square up and knock it down good off the timeout and both these coaches are going to be tested coming down the stretch who's going to be left standing Here's Chalmers, 6.38 to go. And dang with this matchup now. They should clear a little room. This may be a dribble and fine. Look at the two that have to play, the little guy. Chalmers up and under, doesn't get the roll. Sato rejected. Oh, they got a foul as well. That's five, I and think. Shavlin it's Randolph, Randolph. And that's number five. Wow. Tonight on 60 Minutes, he's the smallest guy in the soccer field, but he's the one with the biggest paycheck, and he's only 14 years old. Meet him on 60 Minutes tonight. Uh, Randolph's had two blocks that I thought were play-ons, and that was uh, the second. We had one earlier in the game. Uh, they went to him, won the timeout. He was solid, makes the jump hook, and... At a disadvantage here, but well, if anything, maybe the top of the head. Huh? Yep, yep, yep. So Shavlik Randolph with three points, and uh, Sheldon Williams back on, playing with four fouls. Here's Romain Sato at the line. Mentioned he had 14 of 17 free throws the other night. He's four of six at the line tonight. Cage out, Cole back for Xavier. Romain Sato graduates in May, majoring in French, his native language. He also speaks five others, hoping to speak the language, which will give this Xavier team its first trip ever to a Final Four. Reddick, Lott, Cole, Xavier runs, Finn kicks it left side. 
Sato back outside. Move the ball around. No. Look at the rebound. Cole for the rebound. Up in. How about the numbers? They ran, as you mentioned. Sato with good patience, didn't rush it. Ball reversal, and then attacking the rim. Xavier with 16 second chance points. And a two point lead with 540 to go. There's a shoulder. Or oh, rushing that. Took the hit. Got to get a better shot. That was cold defensively. Here's Chalmers. The spin move. Foul. Reddick. Reddick got a piece of it. He just gave it away. He got up on the wrist. I believe that might be number three for Reddick. And the pushing of the ball the last two trips draws a lot of attention. And Reddick just can't get up high enough. Pulls the arm to save the deuce. The freshman Brandon Cole goes to the line where for the season he's only 24 of 47. How about that? It's a different day, and it means a lot more. 51% free throw shooter. This is for a four-point lead with 5.31 to go. And look at this. Offensive board, Dolman. What a read. Nice slip to the other side of the rim. Duhon on Chalmers, as he has been for the entire second half. Stolen by Reddick. Dolman back. Nice Sato. Sato. Couldn't save it. Out of bounds. He had tried to call timeout, but he did not have possession. Real heady play. Great effort. And Reddick tried to keep it on the left side, but missed dribbled here. That's what cost him the problem. Not in his dominant hand, not as efficient with it. 30 seconds. Well, let's uh, pause and take a breath. <laughs> we'll be right back. Teams began 12 days ago with a dream getting to the final four. Georgia Tech, Oklahoma State have realized the dream. So also has UConn, Duke or Xavier will advance to San Antonio. Take that stroll down the river walk. Enjoy their weekend in a garden, marvelous city. And here's Dang for three. How about the cow about the oh, a little nylon. Oh my goodness, nobody came out. He just popped to the corner, was not screened on that out of bounds. Lou all Dang. 35% shooter from three for the year. There's a miss and a rebound. Yeah, Dolman had a nice, clean look at a Rattler. Four forty-five to go. This is their high-low game now. Dang. Nice effort here by Williams on the floor. Hell ball, possession arrow. Duke. And nice. it's holding their heads. <laughs> yeah, I think Daniel Ewing knocked heads, maybe with his own teammate. They're getting untangled. A great play by Williams. A monster effort that particular trip. You know who needs a blow right now? The officials. I mean, they're looking at one another. They, they have had to work every single trip, every sequence. Patrick Bristol, Amanda Spool, and Mike Kitts, the trio, doing it today. Got to get ready to move. Nice fade, and they get the lock low. Sato out on him. Reddick gets a screen from Williams. Up, under, not there. Dolman has the ball. Here comes Xavier. Tie game, 4.18 to go. And they got people down. Brandon Cole, too strong. Fights for the ball in the hands of Deng. Got to be careful of the charge. Dolman back. Yep. Offense. Yes, sir, Bill. Shot at half court. Great play by Dolman. Rookie on rookie. He can always learn a lesson. Backpedaling. This is one of those fade dribbles. Give it to the guard. And Dolman just offering it up beautifully. Great position. And Deng, unfortunately, not the best of plays. And the fourth foul on the freshman. So the freshman took the charge for Xavier. The freshman picked up his fourth foul for Duke. Four minutes to go. Chalmers and Duhon. And they get the play. Nice. Jay set it up. He took away the turn to the right side of the floor. And with great footwork and anticipation, talk about courage, forgetting about injury, doing anything he can do in the leadership role to help his team. Solid D gets the turnover. 
Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Nothing more significant at this point than foul trouble. Get complete tournament coverage at CBSSportsLine.com. Shavik Randolph has already fouled out for Duke. Anthony Miles fouled out at the 12-27 mark for Xavier. So they can uh, only sit and watch. This has become a physical battle of attrition. Battle Royale. Uh, uh, Cole's going to have to play big. Cage's going to have to play big. Dolman's going to have to play big on the one side. Counter that with Deng playing within himself. And I would look for something low to Williams or Deng. That little high-low that they like to run. Ewing on the floor with Sheldon Williams. Here's Diedrich Finn. The jumper not there. And Romain Sato with a brilliant job of getting up. He's a terrific rebounder. He sure anyway. is. And then over Deng as well. Yes. Xavier hasn't scored from the field in four and a half minutes. Sato has ten rebounds. He's got the ball now. And loses oh. the basketball. He would say, dang it. <laughs> as he rode him into the big guy, and that's what I think scared of Williams was looming. On the floor, as we hit the 315 mark, you've got Ewing and Duhon. Reddick has the ball now, Sato out on him. And here's Justin Cage on Sheldon Williams. The other one is Luol Dang Duhon. No. A tip, a battle for it. Dang saves it. Reddick for three. to kick it out to one of the purest of all with the stroke. 2.45 to go. That is J.J. Reddick's third three of the game. Get some penetration. Don't need threes. Chalmers held to two points in this half by Chris Duhon. He had 13 at the break. Here's Diedrich Finn. Automatic switching now. Maybe get it back to Chalmers. See if he can take Ewing. Finn. Good. Rejected. Williams with a block. Major five. Five rejection. Get it out of Dodge. Got to stop now if you save your little clock usage now. Some heady people, particularly Duhon, at the helm. Two minutes remaining. Duhon on the floor. Up and under. Oh, too strong. Oh, my head is saying. Up and above. Lead of the game for Duke, five points. Two of the biggest rebounds you may see for Duke this season. Dang with the kick out to Reddick, and then elevating up and above with the soft pause that refreshes, at least if you're following Duke. Those back to back plays by Lou Dang result in Duke's largest lead of the ball game. Five points, 146 to go. Both teams, two timeouts. Both are in the double bonus. Xavier, whose dream might be slipping away now, trails by five. Bad Mata, 36 years of age. Mike Shashevsky on the right. West Point said fear is a factor the way he was raised in a working class Polish community in Chicago. You all are afraid of losing your spot. It's a motivational device he uses. And his team is up by five. Well, Xavier has some answers now. They're going to Sato. Offensive rebounds have been a very important aspect of their game. Dribble drive as well. Look at Dolman and Rook as well. They're taking over. The babies stepping up big. 80 seconds to go. It's a three-point Duke lead. Just got to stay at home. Don't gamble. Reddick on the curl. And the pull, yep. Yeah. The hands in there. Sato. I believe they're both be sure. They've both been shooting too. That's the foul on Sato, his third. And going to the line is the second best free throw shooter in college basketball this year. Over the course of these games, J.J. Reddick has missed seven. And you saw two of them recently. The shooting touch learned on a driveway in Roanoke, Virginia. His dad, Ken, instilled in him a love for the game. J.J. Reddick said in the eighth and ninth grades, he broke both of his wrists. First the right, then the left, then the right. 
those broken wrists and the casts helped him form a shooting touch. And he seldom hits the rim. And look at this denial, almost a steal by Ewing. Great anticipation. Now, plenty of time you're in a situation now. Still think, too, if you're Xavier. This is the toughest part of the floor to inbound, Vern. The angle is so difficult, it leads to a steal frequently. Now, they don't go aggressively. Diedrich Finn, 105 to go, and a five-point margin for Duke. And double screen to get Chambers. Xavier trying to become only the second seed in the history of this tournament to get to the final four. And a foul on the drive is going to send Sato back to the line. Now, they've been using that bounce beautifully. All the big guys now, the little guys are having their problem getting through traffic. And Sato being more aggressive. Nice use of the left hand. Gets the chance to bang two. J.J. Redick. Tiffany Thompson, his legal guardian, met him at the Dayton Airport on January 19, 1999. Romain Sato spoke no English. Tiffany Thompson at the time with two children of her own, she and her husband Tom, a police sergeant in Dayton. She used to post notes around objects in the house to help teach him English. He misses the second. It's a four-point game. One solid trip is what you're thinking if you're Xavier now. Milk it a little bit if you're Duke. And you've got Chris Duhon, the only senior on the starting five for Duke. Lou all day. He learned to dribble. Watching tapes of Grant Hill. And then Grant, when he was struggling this year, gave him a few phone calls. They become great buddies, and he his game familiar. Eight on the shot clock. It's in Duhon's hands. Trip. Trip, he'll go to the line. Wow, they got everything they wanted here. Everything but five seconds. There was a book years ago, Profiles in Courage. This is a profile in courage. Damaged, injured, and yet rising to the occasion, Vern. Chris Duhon. Mike Krzyzewski was talking about how he had a conversation on Monday night with his old coach, Bob Knight. They talked for an hour. Mike Krzyzewski told Bob Knight how appreciative he was of having Chris Duhon on the floor as an extension of himself. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Lionel Chalmers, 15 points, 5 of 14 from the field for Xavier. Lou Alding, 18.7 rebounds from Duke. But here's the heart and soul of the Blue Devil basketball team. Chris Duhon. What a player. What a man. Duke leads by six. 65-59 with 24.6 to go. Duke with one timeout left. Xavier has two, both teams in the double bonus. It was tied at 56 all. Duke on a 12-3 run. And the two biggest plays, I think, of the ball game were the plays made by Lou Aldang. Absolutely. The rebound, the kick out to Reddick, and then the tip. Quick hitter right now. Get your sneak fence set. Here's Finn for three. Nope. Saved. Nope, it's not saved. It's out of bounds. It will be Xavier Ball. Well, we've referred to this often as a mosaic, and the final piece of glass in this pretty picture is being put in place here in the final 25 seconds of this. The first game on Saturday, that one's no good. And here's the uh, putback. It's good by Justin Cage, and time is called by Xavier. 65-61, 7.7 remaining. Four-point game, Duke, 65-61 with 7.7. Bad Mata retains hope as the Duke Blue Devils will inbound the ball with 7.7 to go. First game again on Saturday in San Antonio. Eddie Sutton in Oklahoma State against Paul Hewitt and Georgia Tech and UConn awaits the winner of this game. UConn and Duke, of course, played for the national championship in 1999. Jim Calhoun's team won that one. Here's the ball to Dang, and he's fouled by Sato. And Chalmers, after a great first half, one for six and two points simply because Chris Duhon wouldn't permit it to happen. I mean, that's what you ask for. That's what you look for. But the Atlantic 10 has done themselves proud, I think. When you think of St. Joe's great performance, 
and Xavier. I mean, terrific teams that really stepped up at the right time of the year. And yet, too, particularly with things, major contributions coming down the stretch. Now here's Dang, who made the two big plays in this second half. Tonight on CBS, 60 minutes as soon as we're concluded here, followed by Cold Case and the CBS Sunday movie, Jesus. That's the lineup tonight on CBS. Lou Alding, one of two, off the rim, Sato. Final four seconds. The dream ends for Xavier. The shot good by Chalmers, and time is called with point eight, eight to go. But it would take a Herculean effort for Xavier to win it. Coach Xavier, a final piece of urgent advice for his team. They trail by three with eight tenths of a second remaining. They have had a brilliant season since going 10 and 9 and 2 and 5 at the start of the Atlantic 10. But Duke will inbound and they've got a three point lead. And Dolman will guard the inbound pass. And just get it in and hold Here's on. Here's Dang, tips it. He's done everything right. In the 60s and 70s, there was John Wooden and UCLA. In the 90s and the new century, there is Mike Krzyzewski and Duke. They are back in the final four. The Blue Devils prevail in a very hard-fought game. They outlast Xavier. They take on UConn next week. First game, tip time at 6.07 Saturday. That features Tech and Oklahoma State. Second, 8.47. For Sullivan Wilcox and Bill Raftery, I'm Bert Lundquist saying goodnight from Atlanta. This is a presentation of CBS, home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship.